this is the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, and I am Chaplain Bishop Archduke Dr. <coughs> Robert L. Maxwell of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, Duke of Pomeranian Livonia. Colonel of the Royal Guard of Pomeran and Livonia, Field Marshal of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry and Knight of the Sacred and Military Order of Merits of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, Scott of the House of Armizolan, and we're going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 6. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to <coughs> hide these words in our, our... Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to grant us wisdom and knowledge concerning this subject. Uh, baptize us with the Holy Ghost. Uh, let my preaching teaching be acceptable to you, and let this message minister to those who need to be ministered by this message, and let this be a word someone needs to hear. We ask in the Lord Jesus Christ's name, and pray in Christ Jesus' name through the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, I give you absolution and absolve your sins of omission, commission. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. Amen. All right, dear ladies. Gentlemen, without further ado, turn to Isaiah chapter 6. Get out your Bibles, take notes, and follow along, if you will. Isa 6 to 1 In the year that King Uzziah died, I had a vision of the Lord. He was on his throne high above, and his robe filled the temple. Isa 6 to two flaming creatures with six wings each were flying over him. They covered their faces with two of their wings and their bodies with two more. They used the other two wings for flying. Isa 6 to three as they shouted, Holy, 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 Lord All-Powerful. The earth is filled with your glory. Isa 6 to four as they shouted, the doorposts of the temple shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Isa 6 to 5 then I cried out, I'm doomed. Everything I say is sinful, and so are the words of everyone around me. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord All-Powerful. Isa 6 to 6 one of the flaming creatures flew over to me with a burning coal that it had taken from the altar with a pair of metal tongs. Isa 6 to 7 it touched my lips with the hot coal and said, this has touched your lips. Your sins are forgiven, and you are no longer guilty. Isa 6 to 8 After this, I heard the Lord ask, Is there anyone I can send? Will someone go for us? I'll go, I answered. Send me. Isa 6 to 9 Then the Lord told me to go and speak this message to the people. You will listen and listen, but never understand. You will look and look, but never see. The Lord also said, Isa 6.10 Make these people stubborn. Make them stop up their ears, cover their eyes, and fail to understand. Don't let them turn to me and be healed. Isa 6.11 Then I asked the Lord, How long will this last? The Lord answered, Until their towns are destroyed and their houses are deserted, until their fields are empty. 
ISA 612 and I have sent them far away, leaving their land in ruins. ISA 613 if only a tenth of the people are left, even they will be destroyed. But just as stumps remain after trees have been cut down, some of my chosen ones will be left. spoken in here died in 740 BC having suffered from a leprosy a different kind of leprosy not the leprosy we see in, uh, today in some countries uh, Isaiah describes a Theopathy, a visible manifestation of God. God's coming is often attended by such phenomena as earthquakes, smoke, fire, and lightning. Atona, and the splendor of God's holiness inspires the prophet throughout his ministry. In his vision he saw not the temple in Jerusalem but the heavenly temple. The seraphims, this is a Hebrew word probably meaning burning one. Representation of angelic creatures with six wings have been discovered in the Near East by archaeologists. <clears throat> the serpent have no glory to compare with God, and they cannot look on him directly. Cover his feet, this may be an indication of modesty. The seraphim does the sovereign's will. Here it is to praise him. Holy, 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 a threefold repetition is the strongest sort of Splendor, nothing is as holy as God. The whole earth, this announcement explains the cosmic perspective of the prophet. God is king of the world and his salvation and judgment extend to all nations. Woe is me, Isaiah was astonished by the glory of God. Like Peter, he became afraid. He pronounced in word clear, curse upon him altar, the altar from which the live coals was taken is not described. The stress is on the purification necessary for approaching God. The altar symbolizes purification by the blood and the fire, purification by the spirit, the blood of Christ, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit sanctifies believers. My mouth, your lips, the purification makes the prophet acceptable as ministry.
ministers of God's word who will go for us. The Lord invites Isaiah to listen. The Lord invited Isaiah to listen in on the session of the royal heavenly courts from this moment on Isaiah is a servant of God's court and proclaim God's message to kings and people alike. Now, like I've said before, um, angels are basically human uh, human beings before they became flesh. So, man is called to be born of woman once, once. And then they die, so every angel becomes flesh and born of woman to be born once in this lifetime and then they die. So it's very quite, it's very possible that the seraphim are God's very elect before they're born a woman of flesh. And so Isaiah saw the theopony and by and what he saw blew him away and he realized how insignificant he was how unrighteous and unholy he actually is And of course, uh, verses one through eight, we see this 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 kind of imagery in uh, Revelation. Isaiah's vision was his commission to be God's messenger to his people. Isaiah was given a difficult mission. He had to tell people who believed they were blessed by God that instead God was going to destroy them because of their disobedience. Isaiah's lofty vision of God in six uh, one through four gives us a sense of God's greatness, mad mystery, and power. Isaiah's example of recognizing his sinfulness before God encouraged, encourages us to confess our sins. His picture of forgiveness reminds us that we too are forgiven when we recognize how great our God is, how sinful we are, and the extent of God's forgiveness. We receive power to do His work. Uh, how does your concept of His greatness measure up? Of God measure up to Isaiah's. So, you know, if we're going to go out and 
share the gospel, we yeah, we got to make sure you know we're uh, cleanse ourselves of our sins of omission, commission by repenting of our sins and confessing with our mouths that we are sinners before we go out and uh, minister which we need to do on a daily basis and we need to be willing and ready to surrender and to submit to God and say God we are willing to go where you call us to go Then the next task of Isaiah, after he uh, got himself cleansed, was to go out and prophesy the judgment that would fall upon not only the house of Israel, but Judah and the captivity. Also, God said there would be a remnant. There would be a remnant of uh, those descendants from the house of Israel and the descendants of the house of Judah. that remnant being Jesus Christ and it points forward to uh, the judgment that would fall upon Jerusalem in 70 AD and the destruction of the temple in 70 AD and the scattering of the house of Judah but even then there would be a remnant reserved and that remnant has been with us ever since that remnant being preserved through the slow gradual process of Christianizing the whole entire world ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity. That remnant being God's elect and very elect who are preserved for all eternity in the third world age and heaven age.
and then the punishment of the Roman Empire upon the house of Judah and even some of the members of of the Pharisees and Sadducees and even descendants of Judah. And in an uh, application sense, punishment upon us, the non elect the world because of their disobedience and the way they live and so forth and upon the backsliding Christians God uses these various different nations and so forth to exercise his punishment and then he uses another nation to exercise his punishment upon the previous nation of their wickedness, etc., etc., and then the ultimate punishment from God's promises to preserve his people if we are faithful to him we can be sure of his mercy we need to recognize God's holiness his righteousness and how insignificant we are compared to his holiness his righteousness his godliness that we are wicked, sinful, and because of the grace of God, we have forgiveness and mercy. Because we are saved by grace, justified by faith alone in Christ Jesus, saved on the works, not meritorious works. We're positionally in right standing before God. But we're nothing but snow-covered dung. And we must... be faithful to Him, serve Him, live for Him, and remember to confess our sins. So we can do what God has called us to do. We must have that we need to stay right with God and get. In the Word of God, through prayer, praise, and proclamation of the Word of God. Study the Word of God and confess your sins to one another and to God when you fall short of His glory. Because we're always going to fall short of His glory no matter what. If you're backsliding, get right with God. If you're backsliding a little bit, 
get right with God. If you want to do what He's called you to do, then you need to keep yourself right with God and don't disrupt your communal, uh, communal relationship with God. Because without God's power and His authority and working in and through you, you won't accomplish what He's called you to, to, to do. And don't get complacent and think, oh, everything's good and uh, good and so forth, and everything's just fine and dandy and so forth. Because He'll. Uh, inflate your ego as fast as you think it. Isaiah 6 to 1 8. In this figurative vision, the temple is thrown open to view, even to the most holy place. The prophet, standing outside the temple, sees the divine presence seated on the mercy seat, raised over the Ark of the Covenant, between the cherubim and seraphim, and the divine glory filled the whole temple. See God upon his throne. This vision is explained, John the score 12 colon 41, that Isaiah now saw Christ's glory, and spake of him, which is a full proof that our Savior is God. In Christ Jesus, God is seated on the throne of grace, and through him, the way into the holiest is laid open. See God's temple, his church on earth, filled with his glory. His train, the skirts of his robes, fill the temple, the whole world, for it is all God's temple. And yet he dwells in every contrite heart. See the blessed attendants by whom his government is served. Above the throne stood the holy angels called seraphim, which means burners. They burn in love to God, and zeal for his glory against sin. The seraphim showing their faces veiled, declares that they are ready to yield obedience to all God's commands, though they do not understand the secret reasons of his counsels, government, or promises. All vain glory, ambition, ignorance, and pride, would be done away by one view of Christ in his glory, this awful vision of the divine majesty overwhelmed the prophet with a sense of his own vileness. We are undone if there is not a mediator between us and this holy God. A glimpse of heavenly glory is enough to convince us that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Nor is there a man that would dare to speak to the Lord, if he saw the justice, holiness, and majesty of God, without discerning his glorious mercy and grace in Jesus Christ. The live coal may denote the assurance given to the prophet, of pardon, and acceptance in his work, through the atonement of Christ. Nothing is powerful to cleanse and comfort the soul, but what is taken from Christ's satisfaction and intercession. The taking away sin is necessary to our speaking with confidence and comfort, either to God in prayer, or from God in preaching, and those shall have their sin taken away who complain of it as a burden, and see themselves in danger of being undone by it. It is great comfort to those whom God sends, that they go for God, and may therefore speak in his name, assured that he will bear them out. Isaiah 6-9-13 God sends Isaiah to foretell the ruin of his people. Many hear the sound of God's word, but do not feel the power of it. God sometimes, in righteous judgment, gives men up to blindness of mind, because they will not receive the truth in the love of it. But no humble inquirer after Christ, need to fear this awful doom, which is a spiritual judgment on those who will still hold fast their sins. Let everyone pray for the enlightening of the Holy Spirit, that he may perceive how precious are the divine mercies, by which alone we are secured against this dreadful danger. Yet the Lord would preserve a remnant, like the tenth, 
holy to him. And blessed be God, he still preserves his church. However professors or visible churches may be locked off as unfruitful, the holy seed will shoot forth, from whom all the numerous branches of righteousness shall arise. Isaiah 6, Doppelpunkt 1, im Tod des Jahres des Königs. Ossia sah ich den Herrn sitzen auf einem hohen und erhabenen Throne, und seine Säume füllten den Tempel. Isaiah 6, Doppelpunkt 2, Seraphim standen oben über ihm. Ein jeder von ihnen hatte sechs Flügel, mit zwei entdeckten sie ihre Angesichter, mit zwei entdeckten sie ihre Füße und mit zwei flogen sie. Isaiah 6, Doppelpunkt 3, und eine rief dem anderen zu und sprach, Heilig, heilig, heilig ist der Herr der Herrscher, die ganze Erde ist voll seiner Herrlichkeit. Isa 6 Doppelpunkt 4 Da erbebten die Pfosten der Schwellen von der Stimme ihres Rufens, und das Haus ward mit Rauch erfüllt. Isa 6 Doppelpunkt 5 Da sprach ich, wehe mir, ich vergehe. Denn ich bin ein Mann von unreinen Lippen und wohne unter einem Volk, das auch unreine Lippen hat, denn meine Augen haben den König, den Herrn der Herrscher, gesehen. Isa 6 Doppelpunkt 6 Da flog einer der Seraphim zu mir, der hatte eine glühende Kohle in seiner Hand, die er mit der Zange vom Altar genommen. Isa 6 Doppelpunkt 7 und er berührte meinen Mund und sprach, siehe, das hat deine Lippen berührt, deine Schuld ist weg und deine Misse dort gesühnt. Isa 6 Doppelpunkt 8 und ich hörte die Stimme des Herrn fragen, wen soll ich senden, und wer wird für uns gehen? Da sprach ich, hier bin ich, sende mich. Isa 6 Doppelpunkt 9 und er sprach, gehe und sprich zu diesem Volk, höret immer fort und versteht nicht, seht immer zu und erkennet nicht. Isa 6 Uhr 10 verstocke das Herz dieses Volkes, verstopfe ihre Ohren und verblende ihre Augen, dass sie mit ihren Augen nicht sehen, mit ihren Ohren nicht hören, und dass ihr Herz nicht zur Einsicht komme und sich bekehre und Linderung erfahre. Isa 6 Uhr 11 und ich fragte, wie lange, Herr? Er antwortete, bis die Städte Wüste liegen, weil niemand darin wohnt, und die Häuser menschenleer sein werden und das Land in eine Wüste verwandelt ist. Isa 6 Uhr 12, denn der Herr wird die Menschen entfernen, und groß wird sein die Verlassenheit inmitten des Landes. Isa 6 Uhr 13 und bleibt noch ein Zehntel darin, so fällt auch dieser wiederum der Vertilgung anheim. Aber wie die Winter und die Eiche beim Fällen doch noch ihren Wurzelstock behalten, so bleibt ein heiliger Samen als Wurzelstock. Jesaja 6, 1, 8. In diesem bildlichen Vision wird der Tempel offen angezeigt werden geworfen, sogar das Allerheiligste. Der Prophet, stehen außerhalb des Tempels, sieht in der göttlichen Gegenwart auf dem Gnadenstuhl sitzend, über die Lade des Bundes erhöht, zwischen der Cherubim und Seraphim, und die göttliche Herrlichkeit erfüllt die ganze Tempel. Wie Gott auf seinem Thron. Diese Vision wird erklärt, Jo unterstrich 12, 41, dass Jesaja sei jetzt die Herrlichkeit Christi und redete von ihm die eine vollständige Beweis dafür, dass unser Erlöser ist Gott. In Jesus Christus ist Gott auf dem Thron der Gnade sitzt, und durch ihn der Weg in das Allerheiligste wird freigelegt. Siehe den Tempel Gottes, seine Kirche auf der Erde, seiner Ehre voll. Sein Zug, die Röcke seiner Robe, füllte den Tempel, die ganze Welt, denn sie alle Gottes Tempel ist. Und doch lebte ein jeder zerschlagenes Herz. Siehe die gesegneten Begleiter, durch den seine Regierung serviert wird. Über dem Thron stand die heiligen Engel, Seraphim genannt, was bedeutet, Brenner. Sie brennen in der Liebe zu Gott, und Eifer für seine Herrlichkeit gegen die Sünde. Die Seraphim, die ihre Gesichter verhüllt, erklärt, dass sie bereit sind, gehorsam Befehle alle Gottes ergeben, obwohl sie nicht die geheimen Gründen der seiner Ratschläge, Regierung oder Versprechungen zu verstehen. Alles vergebens Ruhm, Ehrgeiz, Unwissenheit und Stolz, würde sich durch einen Blick auf Christus in seiner Herrlichkeit geschehen. Diese schreckliche Vision der göttlichen Majestät überwältigt den Propheten mit einem Gefühl der eigenen Niedertracht. Wir werden rückgängig gemacht, wenn es kein Vermittler zwischen uns und diesen heiligen Gott. Ein Blick in die himmlische Herrlichkeit reicht, um uns zu überzeugen, dass alle unsere Gerechtigkeit ist wie ein beflecktes Kleid. Es gibt auch einen Mann, der es wagen würde, dem Herrn zu sprechen, wenn er sah, die Gerechtigkeit, Heiligkeit und Majestät Gottes ohne anspruchsvolle seine herrlichen Gnade und Barmherzigkeit in Jesus Christus. Die blühende Kohle kann die Sicherheit auf den Propheten gegeben, der Vergebung und Akzeptanz in seinem Werk zu bezeichnen, durch das Sühnopfer Christi. Nichts ist kraftvoll zu reinigen und zu trösten die Seele, aber was wird aus Zufriedenheit und Fürbitte Christi übernommen? Das Wegnehmen der Sünder ist notwendig, um unser Gespräch mit Vertrauen und Komfort, sei es im Gebet zu Gott oder von Gott entpredigt 
Und diejenigen müssen ihre Sünde weg, die es als eine Last beschweren genommen und sehen sich selbst in Gefahr von ihm rückgängig. Es ist großer Trost für diejenigen, die Gott sendet, dass sie zu Gott zu gehen und kann daher in seinem Namen zu sprechen, sicher sein, dass er sie bestätigen. Punkt Jesaja 6, 9, 13 Gott sendet Jesaja, die Ruine seines Volkes vorauszusagen. Viele hören den Klang des Wortes Gottes, aber nicht das Gefühl der Macht davon. Gott manchmal, in gerechten Gerichtes, gibt den Menschen bis zur Blindheit des Geistes, weil sie die Wahrheit in der Liebe nicht empfangen. Aber in einem bescheidenen Frag nach Christus, müssen diese strenge Strafe, die eine geistige Urteil über diejenigen, die noch festhalten, werden ihre Sünden fürchten. Ein jeder beten für die Aufschluss des Heiligen Geistes, damit er erkennen, wie kostbar sind die göttliche Barmherzigkeit, durch die allein wir gegen diese schreckliche Gefahr gesichert. Doch der Herr einen Überrest, ihn zu erhalten, wie die Zehnte, heilig. Und Gott sei gepriesen, bewahrte seine Kirche, jedoch Professoren oder sichtbaren Kirchen kann oft als unfruchtbar gekappt werden, wird der heiligen Samen her schießen, von dem alle die zahlreichen Zweige der Gerechtigkeit wird kommen.